Welcome to today's Yolia Water Tech Talk, Wastewater Treatment Solutions for Bourbon and Whiskey Distilleries. My name is TJ Willits and I'll be your moderator for today's presentation. Just some housekeeping items before we get started with the technical presentation. You should be hearing me speak now. There are two methods to listen to today's presentation. The first one, you can listen to on your computer audio. If you're having issues with that, I would recommend you to switch over to the phone call option and you could dial in using your telephone and listen to the presentation using that method. Your microphone is automatically muted and today's webinar presentation is being recorded and you'll be sent a copy a day or two after the webinar. We want to make this presentation as interactive as possible. If you have a question at any time throughout today's presentation, go ahead and type that into the question box on the right hand side and we're going to get to as many questions after the main presentation. This presentation is the first of our Violi Water Tech Talk series. You can see a listing of other webinars on the screen. If there's any that interest you, you could go ahead and head over to our website, violiawatertech.com, and go ahead and register for those live upcoming webinars. In addition to our live webinar series, we also have a large collection of on-demand webinars. And again, you can find that at our website, violiawatertech.com. Those who are in attendance of today's live presentation will receive a PDF participation certificate about one or two days after the live broadcast. So be on the lookout in your email for that document. After today's webinar, you have the opportunity to fill out a short survey. And anyone that fills out that survey will put you in a drawing to win a $25 Amazon gift card. Your feedback is real important to us and we just want to make sure that we make these webinars as relevant and impertinent as possible to those who attend. Veoli is a leading water and wastewater treatment company, and we support our clients through projects, technologies, and services that we provide those clients. We support both municipal and industrial clients, and you can see some of the markets listed there that we do support. And now we're going to transition to the technical portion of today's presentation. I'd like to introduce Timur Denive and Rob Franken. Both speakers have a combined experience of 40 years within the water and wastewater industry and specialize in biological wastewater. Without further ado, I'd like to hand the webinar over to Rob. Rob. So we're going to uh, discuss about wastewater treatment for distilleries, uh, the key drivers that would uh, be a factor in making choices and decisions regarding wastewater treatment, what kind of technologies uh, are into play, come into play for uh, wastewater treatment. We'll present you some case studies of uh, actual projects that we have done or are doing. And um, we'll also elaborate a little bit about our suggested approach on how to get going with a wastewater project. And then uh, well, I'm sure we'll have some time left for questions and answers. Well, there's a lot of technical terms that will be uh, going around in this uh, talk. Uh, I'm not going to explain all of these. Uh, um, you can actually, in the uh, in the panel, there is a download link, and if you click there, you get a uh, you get a download with an explanation for all these acronyms, and that should help you. Uh, that should help you out. So, very high level um, on the distilling process itself. Um, all distilleries are a little bit different, but uh, on high level, it is uh, you take uh, grain, uh, either corn or wheat or barley or any other sort of grain, um, you mash it, you ferment it with yeast, you produce alcohol, uh, you let it mature in a, in a beer tank, and then you distill it in a in this distillation column. Now, the and of course, on top from the top of the distillation column, you get your product, and that gets uh, stored in the warehouse, and, and eventually gets bottled and sent out to the market. Now, where does the water and wastewater come in? Uh, wastewater in particular for this talk. So um, on the bottling side of the, the facility, there is uh, plenty of cleaning operations, uh, changeover of products where you need to have CIP cycles. Um, there is uh, wastewater coming from there, uh, typically larger amounts, and but in lower concentrations in terms of CD and TSS solids. The, um, on the, the, the still bottom uh, or the slop or fin still, the fixed stillage or the, the whole stillage as uh, some people call it, 
that is really where the bulk of the uh, the COD and nutrients uh, come out of the uh, out of the distillery. And there's various way of well, various ways of dealing with it. The, uh, some of the smaller distilleries just take it away and uh, will be fed to the cattle. Uh, but uh, the larger distilleries will typically have uh, evaporators and dry houses to um, first of all centrifuge the whole stillage to get uh, a thin stillage, uh, and that sludge cake or that wet cake. Uh, gets mixed with the syrup that's coming from the uh, the evaporator that is uh, uh, up concentrating the, uh, the 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 fin stillage. Now that evaporator condensate is also a, a wastewater stream that comes out of the system, typically very low in suspended solids, but uh, uh, a fair amount of COD and BOD in there. Uh, and then of course after the uh, the drying in the dry house there is a DDG, and that is um, disposed off-site. Now this is more and more a problem for many distilleries. Um, obviously there are not enough, there's not enough cattle in the state of Kentucky to take all the, uh, the DDG. So more and more distillers are, are coming to us and um, try to partner with us to see what kind of solutions we can develop as an alternative to this whole uh, evaporation and, and drying uh, process. So in the next slide, um, yeah, so a little bit of it, I know I already touched on this, the wastewater characteristics. It really depends on what a distillery does, if it's a big or a small distillery. Of course, also the raw materials that are used in the distillery have an impact on, um, on the quality of the effluent. Um, but in general, there's always a high strength, very high strength stream coming from the still bottoms. That is uh, something that uh, we can uh, look at. And there is a lower concentrated, con lower concentrated streams from uh, cleaning operations or, or condensates. Um, so it uh, gives uh, a mix of different types of effluent. And of course, there is no one size fits all in terms of wastewater treatment. So it is important to carefully look at all the, uh, the various streams and all the various characteristics and uh, depending on the mix, come up with the right technologies to treat it. So before we go to the technology, so what's driving the projects? Um, if you look at those, there are basically four drivers that we can identify as such. Um, right now, there's a lot of expansion going on in the in the bourbon and whiskey um, industry. Um, many distilleries are expanding or are considering expansion. Now, did that by itself, of course, will also drive a need for wastewater treatment. Depending on what's done right now or current, uh, if it is sent to the sewer, then obviously if the load ex, um, increases, and there's also a risk for uh, exceeding permit uh, limits that are defined in um, in the permits. So if there is a risk of uh, not uh, violations of the permit, then that is a, a big incentive for uh, for the industry in general, but also for distilleries to take a close look at uh, wastewater treatment. More and more often, especially with the more corporate organizations, uh, there is a big push also for being uh, more environmentally friendly, also in terms of wastewater treatment. So how can you actually reduce your carbon footprint? How can you reduce, reduce your energy footprint? Uh, overall, how can you in, in, reduce your environmental footprint by upgrading or modernizing your wastewater treatment or expanding the wastewater treatment. And then there's the issue of future proofing. Um, yeah, I mean, the whole industry is looking at the expansion. Um, you have capacity needs, perhaps in the future, based on projections that are made. You also have tightening of uh, discharge permit limits. You may want to be ready for uh, nitrogen or phosphorus or other nutrient limitations that will at some point in time will come up in permits that will uh, force the industry to address those issues and uh, develop proper treatment strategies. So with that, uh, I want to hand over to uh, Timur, who will explain what kind of technologies we can offer for the treatment of those various wastewater streams. Hey Rob, thank you so much, TG. Appreciate your introduction as well. Uh, this is a very exciting topic for me. I'm sure most of you enjoy the products of uh, of these companies, and it's always nice to help the companies that uh, whose uh, products you enjoy. So I'll be talking about um, 
sort of a portfolio of of instruments we have in our tool bag to help our clients with this. And obviously we cannot go into all of them, but uh, we will be highlighting some that I think are the most applicable given the topics and the regulations and the challenges that are coming up. Um, and going over um, a step-by-step -step sort of a, a solution pocket that we can use for, for this industry and to help our clients. Um, so we will start with equalization. Obviously, the wastewater comp the, unless it's the condensate from the evaporation of of the stillage, the wastewater flows are not consistent. Um, and especially if you talk about the bottling facilities and you have the cycles of cleaning um, and, and running the CIPs, your your stream is going to be uh, is going to be up and down in load and in consistency. So for all of these facilities, especially when we use biological systems, we highly recommend considering equalization step. Equalization step will allow you to control your pH much better, control your load substantially better, and ensure that the overall process afterwards is much more smooth. Um, we we we. We designed this equalization systems, which is basically a mixed tank to prevent any solids from settling and homogenization based on what kind of wastewater we have and the needs we have with, a, with adjusting the pH for the downstream processes. It's very cost effective and I am yet to see a project where adding equalization did not substantially improve the processes afterwards. After equalization, most of the time we we go into the decision making as to how we're going to be proceeding. Often you will see that we will go directly into a biological step, but a lot of times we talk about removing solids from the stream. And here we talk about dissolved air flotation because for industrial clients, there is rarely a technology that fits better for the solids removal um, than than DAF systems. And here I want to emphasize that DAFs could be used as primary or secondary DAFs. And when we come to case studies and wrap takes over again, you will see plenty of examples for those. But basically what we're trying to accomplish, we're trying to remove, TJ, no, can you go back to one slide? I'm sorry. We're trying to remove suspended solids, whether they are as a pre-treatment before the further treatment or a post-treatment from biological treatment. And the basic idea for dissolved air flotation is with the aid of chemistry, coagulants, and flocculants, we combine the solids together into flux. And then by introducing, um, uh, introducing air into water, be it through a compressed water system and the white water or a direct injection, there's many different styles of depths that we use. We float those solids in a very thick cake on the top where you collect it. And the advantage is high solids removal efficiency and a very, very thick cake. We get, let's say, four to 5% solids from the systems and then hauling obviously becomes much more cheaper afterwards. In this way, we, uh, we remove suspended solids, fat oils and grease if necessary. Most of the times in distilleries, FOGs are not that big of a factor, but sometimes they are depending on what gets bypassed around. You prevent issues uh, from downstream wastewater treatment if this is a primary system or uh, if it's a secondary system, which actually the photo is a secondary system for, for dissolved air flotation removing biological solids, it polishes out produced biological solids after biological treatment. 